Republican Senator Marco Rubio is with us from the Capitol. Senator, good morning. Good morning, Charlie. You have said that you support this policy. My question is, where does it go from here, and what are the risks? Well, that's a great question. It's an important one. I think ultimately, I hope that the moment has arrived where in the White House and the administration, and I believe this is the case, realize that as long as Bashar al-Assad is there, you're going to have ISIS or you're going to have al-Nusra or some other radical element because his very presence and after the crimes he's committed against his own people, there will always be a radical element fighting against him until he is removed from power. And what are the risks? Well, I think the risks are uh, an escalation. Uh, we don't know what the Russians are going to do in response. It's, so far, it seems pretty measured. But uh, I certainly think that if there's an effort to remove Assad, uh, they're going to get a little bit more uh, aggressive. How would you remove him? Well, uh, first of all, the only, he has to be removed through a combination of alternatives on the ground that are Syrians, not foreign fighters, not foreign forces. And again, this reminds me of one of those uh, cage matches in professional wrestling where you have, you know, 18 different people in the, in the ring and sometimes they fight each other and the two of them turn on somebody else. You've got Hezbollah, you've got Iran, you've got obviously the Syrian forces, you've got the Russians, you've got multiple rebel groups that are not jihadist. Then you have al-Nusra, which is an al-Qaeda group and their affiliates. And then you have ISIS, of course. So ultimately, I think you've got to have a Sunni, which is the majority in Syria, a Sunni non-jihadist alternative, which is what we should have done back in 2011. And I hope now the work will begin to carve out a space for them uh, to, to be able to grow and, and get more powerful so they can be a clear alternative to Assad. It whatever happens, hopefully a political negotiation, not continued bloodshed. Senator, the Syrian president has killed nearly 500,000 of his own people. Five million Syrians have fled yeah. as refugees. He's gassed his own people, including children. Is bombing an airfield enough? Well, in terms of uh, retribution or punishment for what he's done, of course not. He's a war criminal, and he should be brought into international justice. Are you concerned I'm now, concerned. Senator, about a retaliatory strike of any kind? From Syria? Syria, Russia? Yeah. Well, first of all, Either? the Syrians don't have the capacity to retaliate against the United States other than perhaps doing asymmetrical things or a chemical attack, which is one of the things that we need to talk about is different from the past. You do now have hundreds of American troops as advisors on the ground helping to lead the fight against ISIS. If Assad is willing to use sarin gas against his own people, civilians, he's probably willing to use those against Americans. And, Why do you and, think um, he thought he could get away with it? Well, that's a good question. I think, number one, this is about regime survival. And so if they feel like they're losing territory as they were, that is critical to their survival. He's prepared to go all the way. He's got nowhere else to go. For him, it's a life or death situation. And the other, I think I would say, and I said this the other day, I do believe that when the sentiment is out there that somehow we have given up on efforts to remove him and that, in fact, he's going to stay, I do think it gave him license or perhaps an incentive to believe he could get away with something like this. You I'm glad to see that that's changed. You think specifically the comments by Secretary of State Tillerson gave him license? Well, again, I'm not, I'm not saying that's why Secretary Tillerson said it. I am saying that I do believe that it's not coincidental, uh, that it's not coincidental that he, was that he sees these statements out there and within a couple of days he takes action. The important point is that's not what they're saying anymore. And not just not what they're saying, it's not what they're doing. They made it very clear last night. And I will say this, you know, I know where the president was on the campaign on these issues, but I don't think you could watch that press conference a couple days ago where he was standing next to the King of Jordan mm -hmm. and not see that he was personally moved by the images and the news he got. There's a difference between being a candidate and being the president and having access to this information and the gravity of the office on your shoulders. And both last night in his statements and the day before in that press conference, I think you saw a person, a human being, that our president, Donald Trump, who was deeply impacted, as we all were. Yes. By Thank the you images. so much, Senator. Pleasure to have you Thank this you. morning.